Well, this is friggin' weird. Okay. You can put me on hold. I didn't even know how to do that. I, I didn't know you could put people on hold. That's kind of cool. I just clicked over to the other window and it did it. Oh, okay. I'll have to try but that in the future. Now I don't have video on you, so I don't know what's going on. Well, I got your video, so that's fine. As long as you can hear me and everything like that. And I got yours full screen so everybody can see you fine. Okay, cool. So anyway, what we're talking about tonight is I brought Tom on to talk about the BMW saga. Some of you probably have been following it because a lot of you follow both of us, but for those people that are only on my channel, there's been a little bit of a story going on with Tom's BMW, not just the fact that it got stolen and returned to him, but there's been another ongoing problem that he may have uh, gotten it resolved, but not without a lot of fighting. So I'll just, I'll just let him tell the story. Well, it started, it was doing it like once a month. I got it on June 9th on my birthday, and it failed to start once in June, and I gave it a few minutes, and then it started. Uh, July did the same thing, August it did the same thing, September, and now this time it failed to start, and the other way I've gotten it started a few times with these are trying to like bump start it, which seemed to move the piston or whatever you want to call it up and down, and uh, this time, no matter what I did, it was not going to start, so... I called roadside assistance, which I pay for with the with the price of the bike. I got three year warranty, three year roadside service. They came and uh, towed it in. I got the two videos up on that. And uh, one of the things I did before I bought the bike, just like I did with the KLR, is I researched everything I could find on it. Well, this is the first year the. Uh, BMW Surteo was introduced to the States. So I went through a lot of European uh, info. And originally when it came out, it had a longer front fender, and that kept breaking. So by the time it got to the States, they shortened up the front fender. And they also found that there's a decompression lever that when you turn it on, the computer tells this thing to push in, and it relieves the compression till the engine starts turning and catches fire. Uh, I met a couple other people on YouTube that had Certeos. One, they ended up replacing his uh, computer. Another one, they replaced the decompression lever. And so when I took it, I asked them before I bought it if that had been fixed. And the dealer clown that I talked to said, oh, yeah, it's it's all good. Well, you know, I kind of expect that. Then the uh, when I took it in for the 600-mile service, I did that in July, right before the trip. And I told them, I said, it's done this twice. You need to check this bike out. Well, all they did was uh, scan the uh, computer and said, oh, no trouble codes. I couldn't get it to uh, the mechanic said I couldn't get it to uh, do it for me. So basically, it's not broke. I can't fix it. Okay, I used to be a service rider for Johnny Baxter Chrysler Plymouth in Omaha, so I'm very familiar with the. We can't replicate it. We can't fix it. So I, I'm I'm fully understandable about that. Well, it happened a couple more times, and then this time it was final. Whatever it did this time, it sealed the deal, and uh, it flatbedded in. And uh, after six hours, well, six and a half hours, they finally called me and said, uh, we figured out what's wrong with it. I said, what is it? Oh, it's the decompression lever. So I commenced to uh, really jump down his throat about that. I said, you know, and it was the same guy that sold me the bike. They're salesmen and general managers type thing. So I jumped all over him about that. You know, I, I probably got a little out of line, but oh well. I mean, they don't know me. They don't
don't know the research that I do, so it's somewhat understandable, but the parts will be in next week, and then Barbie will be fixed, and hopefully it'll be fixed for good this time. But uh, what a miserable experience. And I almost feel like, uh, not that I've been lied to, but they don't take my word for anything. They want to see it in black and white, or they want it to do it for them. Yeah, I hear you. Remember summer before last, I had that problem with my Kawasaki, too, to where it would run fine for about 30 minutes, and then it would die. And if I let it set for 10 minutes, it would start and run for another 30 minutes easily. And I was just very fortunate that my mechanic in his basement, he said he had a spare computer that was identical to mine on my bike that he would just change out to try it, and that ended up fixing the problem. But how many people would be willing to do something like that? And he ended up not yeah, even charging you, What are you going to do, go out and buy a computer and yeah. test? Especially for a Certeo. I mean, I'm sure that's not something they got on a shelf in a back room. No, uh, evidently that is the case because remember what I went through with the uh, theft of the bike? They had to go to the assembly line and take an ignition switch off the assembly line. Uh, I don't think they had to do that with the front fender, but they actually had to take an, an entire ignition off the assembly line for a 2013 and send it over here. That took two weeks. Yeah. But, you know, dealers don't stock anything anymore. But I, I just, I get a little perturbed over uh, my word not being taken that, like, I know what I'm talking about, which I've been saying from, if you go back in my videos, I've been saying from day one, it's got to be this, because the KLR experienced that in 2008. So before I bought the 2009 KLR, way back when, I specifically dealt with that issue with my dealer, who's a small town dealer, mom and pop, and that guy took care of me. And then to get into this BMW world and just basically get crapped on, I'm not taking that real well. Yeah, and you told me they won't even let you see in the shop, let alone walk into it or see what anybody's oh, yeah. doing. Oh, yeah. I can't go when I'm out there, when they were servicing it, I wanted to go out there and watch them do the service on the bike because I turn my own wrenches because I trust myself. However, okay, it's under warranty. All right, go ahead. You guys jack it up. You're going to eat it one way or another. I got a three-year warranty. So I started walking around thinking, okay, well, maybe they got windows or something that you can sit there and stand and watch or look in the shop or something. No, it's like a laboratory. When they're working on your BMW at, at the Omaha dealership, it's like a laboratory. You can't see, go back, do anything to uh, watch what they're doing to your bike. It's like the great secret. Wow. And that, that just kind of really blows my mind. I mean, okay, you can tell me it's for insurance basis. I understand that because we had that with the uh, Chrysler dealership I worked at. You can't just let every Tom, Dick, and Harry in there where they're going to get under a lift and, you know, yeah, they're going to get in the way. Yeah, I understand but, my mechanic shop, you have to be escorted. You have to have somebody, an employee with you to watch you to make sure you don't do any crazy things. Right, exactly, exactly. But then uh, I've been reading a lot of comments on the last two videos, and I kept hearing this constant, it's your battery. Um, I, I appreciate all the input, but you're hearing it, you're not feeling it. You don't have the experience that I have with the bike and with the KLR from before. Um, I, I honestly appreciate it. But then I started seeing some squabbling between uh, commenters. Yeah. And I was like, guys, ease up. Ease up. I know, I know what I'm dealing with. And I try not to get too fired up and fly off the handle because you do that and it's just a lose situation across the board. So, 
Yeah, Tom will actually tell you I was actually more upset about it than him because when we were talking yeah. about different bike choices, I kind of recommended the BMW based on some friends of mine that owned it and just the basic reputation of the bike. And then for him to get such a raw deal on a brand new bike being unreliable, I mean, when you have a bike that's unreliable, it's just, it's nothing but headaches, I mean. And, yeah, and the price you pay, I mean, you don't you don't pay a cheap price for a BMW. What did you pay, more than twice what you would for a KLR 650? $10,040 out the door. And you could have gotten two KLRs for that and probably even had a little bit of change back, right? Yeah. Yeah. Well, the KLRs are six grand, but I could have bought the uh, 2011 models. I could have got two of them, but yeah. it, it, it just I didn't I didn't want to do another KLR because basically every bike that you buy, you're going to have to modify to mm -hmm. suit you. And then you're going to have to modify its little idiosyncrasies. Like the KLR's got the new hickey, the thermo bob, uh, the weak brakes. I mean, all that stuff is fixable. Yeah. But here I thought this BMW would be out of the box. I don't have to do anything but put my crash bars on, mount my boxes, and I shouldn't have to worry about it. Yeah. So it wasn't just your advice I was taking on that either. I mean, Red and White Rebel, Larry the Lookout. Um, geez, it, it's it's countless in the number of people that when I first got it were like, you're going to be really happy with that bike. And I, I, I'm really happy with the bike. It's just... Oh, yeah, and if you get I'm past... If, if you just get past this part in a few, you know, six six months, a year down the road, there may not be any other even minor problem with it. And then you'd probably look back and say, well, overall, you know, it's not a perfect bike, but it's pretty damn good. Yeah, that's that's exactly. I still am maintaining that opinion right now. It's like, okay, it's got a hiccup. All right, we'll we'll get it fixed. And uh, I mean, especially when it got stolen. I mean, they didn't have to jump through a hoop to cough up a uh, an ignition, mm -hmm. but they went out on the assembly line. So I was like really impressed with that. Yeah. But. Uh, yeah, I get my low spots where I'm like, this is bullshit. But then overall, I'm going, okay, it's nothing but a time factor thing. I mean, it'll get solved. Yeah. And this is going to get solved. And that, pretty much that's about it. Yeah. But I just don't want the guys uh, that are watching my videos to get into big comment wars over... Well, you oh, should have done this, you should have done that, or it's this, or it's that. I mean, I had my ideas, too, that didn't turn out to be right, too. I was thinking that maybe it was a weak starter, because I had a, a Hot Rod Oldsmobile, too, that I'd really hopped up, and I kept the stock starter on it, and the guys told me later on in the shop that, man, you got to really up your uh, starter performance on that and pay a bit more money, and I paid 100 bucks extra for a starter, and it solved the problem, but that's that specific vehicle. That doesn't necessarily translate even to motorcycles. But if you listen to that, uh, if you watch that video where it failed this last time, yeah, I hit the starter button for maybe, I, I didn't even time it, five, maybe ten seconds, mm -hmm. and I already knew it was not going to start. Yeah. Because I know that bike that well, that if it doesn't fire up within the first two seconds, exactly what I said, oh, here we go. And compression was what you were fighting. Yeah. Which yeah. the best starter in the world isn't going to do anything about that. No. I, well, you know, if you had a more powerful starter, it would spin it. Mm -hmm. And, yeah, it would probably catch fire, but... But do they even make one, too? Do they even make a high-performance starter for that bike? No. No. So. But if you got that compression lever, then it's actually what it is, is the compression lever is not pushing in far enough. Mm -hmm. Unlike the 08 KLR, you had to grind off... 50 thousandths of an inch so it didn't push in too far yeah this one didn't push in far enough so it wouldn't totally release where it was able to free spin the engine and start it up yeah and four days without running that's nothing mm -hmm. that's 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 absolutely nothing i mean i normally run it way more often, but I've been sick, so yeah. whatever. But your average motorcycle rider probably uses it on weekends anyway, so it'll sit for five or six days, and then the guy will go out to the garage expecting it to start. 
Yeah, and then on top of that, I plugged in my, uh, my, uh... Tender? No, my gel cell battery. Oh, okay. My jumper that I use for my face shield in the wintertime, I plugged that into my cigarette lighter, which is hot fired straight to the, uh, battery, and that should have been more than enough juice. So even after I plugged that in and it was still dragging, I was like... Okay, I got these two batteries, and basically they're in series or parallel? Series. Parallel. Parallel. So it's still putting out 12 volts, yeah. but the backup battery is supplying power to the other battery, which is supplying power to the starter, so it's getting the full charge. Yeah. I mean, it's getting the full... Amps. Yeah, full amps, full 12 volts to spin that starter. And when I did that, and it was still dragging, I mean, I can... You can actually feel it, and you yeah. can hear it, that it's not spinning up to speed. Yeah. So, yeah, it's not going to fire. So. But anyway, uh, but anyway but it, it looks like a week later, he will be back up on the road and ready, more than ready for the PBC way ahead of time. So that was good, too. That was my concern. Yeah, and in the meantime, I'm going to figure out a way to get a uh, uh, gel cell battery actually in the bike. Okay. Instead of having to use it for the backup, because then I'll use my backup for my face shield. So mm -hmm. it's all good. Every, everything's fine. Oh, good, good. It's just I'm really disappointed that yeah. You know, I thought I thought I bought a really good product that I wouldn't have to out of the box. I wouldn't have to deal with, mm -hmm. but but those things happen. I mean, yeah, they, they all got them. I think. Yeah. So, okay. Well, that's it. I'll call this one, and then we'll uh, post this one up for everybody to see, and I'll give you a copy, too, if you want to post it. Yeah, that'd be great.